Okay, so now what we're going to talk about is applying the chain rule, but this time with trig functions. Um, because it's very important to, for us to understand that a trigonometric function like sine or cosine is a function in its own. Um, and it's important, you know, we'll think about it with the brackets involved, um, because whatever is inside that bracket, we have to apply the derivative of that onto the end of our normal derivative in order to make everything work. Um, it's best to look at these in, in terms of examples. Um, so let, let's say we have our main function. Let's say this is um, the sine of 2x. Okay. Um, we have to see this as two separate functions. Um, we have to see that not only do we have the sine of a function, but we also have this 2x on the inside. It's no longer an x. If you watched my other video, you know, I was trying to explain that, you know, really the chain rule applies to everything. You know, normally, if there, you just have an x or a theta or whatever your variable is, if you just have a single term on the inside, no coefficient, or excuse me, the coefficient of 1, its derivative is just 1. So it multiplies out and we, we leave it alone. Um, but if that term is anything different than a single x or a single theta or a t or whatever variable possible, in this case, it is now a 2x instead of a normal x, which you might normally see, um, we now have to deal with this derivative at the end of our problem. Um, now the chain rule says we take the derivative of our main function while respecting and leaving alone the inside function until the end. We've got to take care of this 2x at the end after we take the derivative of sine that already has the 2x inside of it. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like we end up with having, okay, so we have our f prime of x. We look at the derivative of sine first with the 2x inside of it, and we don't mess with the 2x, okay? We don't mess with it at all. So the derivative of sine of anything is just the cosine of whatever's on the inside, which in this case is the 2x, so we have cosine of 2x. But then we ha still have to go and delve deeper, and we have to look at this 2x, um, and we have to take the derivative of whatever's on the inside at the very end. We tack it on at the end. So basically it goes right here. Okay, so what's the derivative of 2x? It's 2. Okay, so when we go forth and simplify this, we end up with 2 times the cosine of 2x. Okay, so... It's not just the cosine of 2x, but it's 2 times the cosine of 2x. And it's because of this pesky little 2x that is on the inside of our original sine function. Okay? So it's always about, and the chain rule is always about this, and a lot of people forget. You have to leave this inside function intact, and then you respect it later by tacking on the derivative of that inside function later on. Okay, that's the key to the chain rule, is you respect that 2x by taking the derivative at the end, but you kind of ignore it at first when you um, take the derivative of the outside function. Okay, now here is, I'm going to do one more example, which um, I think is, is very, very important, because a lot of people forget about... Um, applying the chain rule to this sort of situation. And so I'm going to skip to the next slide here. If you had a function, f of x equals, so very similar to the last one, sine squared. And I'm just going to switch this up just a little bit just so I can get rid of, so I just don't have too many twos involved because twos get really weird. Um, because 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 plus 2 is 4. So I'm going to do 3. Sine squared of 3x. So this is 
actually three functions. And so we need to identify each of these three functions before we move on. The furthest inside function here is our 3x. It is the closest thing to x. It's that, that intimate operator on x. We then move out and say, okay, well, what's the next thing operating on x? Well, that's the sine. The sine function is what's operating on it next. Now, just because of the way I've notated it, and that's the way they notate, or everybody notates most trig functions, is that they add this little squared thing towards on the inside part. Um, but that is actually the last operator. What's really happening here, and I'm going to write this out and I'm going to delete it real quick, is that you're taking this 3x, you're taking 3x, okay? Then what you're doing is you're applying the sine of that 3x, and then you're squaring the whole thing, okay? Now, just with the way they operate with sine is that they move it on the inside, and so that's why you end up with it looking something like this, the sine squared of 3x. But there's really three things happening. You Again, you start with your 3x. That's the closest thing happening. Then you move to the sine of 3x. And then you square that sine of 3x. That's what this big function up here is doing. Is you're doing 3 times x. Then you're taking the sine of that 3 times x. And then you are squaring that sine of 3 times x. So there's really three functions occurring at once. Now... It's important to think in this way because when we go ahead and we take the derivative of this, we now have to respect all three functions at once, and you have to deal with them at uh, you have to deal with them in kind of a a linear fashion. So what we do here is we think about the square first. What do we do when we when we have a function that is squared? Well. We just apply the power rule to it, right? We drop the 2 down, and we take 1 away from the exponent. That's what was trained in the power rule. Same thing happens here. But guess what? We not only have another inside function, but another one inside of that. No big deal. No big deal at all, right? We just have to take our time. We've identified our three functions. We just move along piece by piece until we have it all done. Then our main work is to simplify everything, okay? So I'm going to erase this stuff. And so you see our color codes here. So we start off with the outermost function, which is this squared. Well, when we square something, again, how do we take our derivative? We drop that down, right? So we drop the 2 down. We then rewrite our main function everything intact everything else intact okay so i still have my sine it was squared but i have to take one away right that's what the power rule tells us to do we take one away from it so now i'm going to erase this two minus one becomes a one right which when we consider that as an exponent is nothing so i'm just going to get rid of that altogether it's now gone right? This 2 is now gone. There's an invisible 1 here, but we don't need to write that, because 1 is an exponent we don't need to express. I then have 3x. Okay? So that's just the power rule applied to sine squared. Now, though, I have to go to my next inside function. Which, which one is that? What was the next inside function? It's this blue part, right? It's the sine of 3x. Right, I'm taking care of the squared. I'm now moving to the sine of 3x. Well, what's the derivative of sine? If you said cosine, then you're right. So, but again, because of the chain rule, I have to leave the inside function alone, right? I leave it alone because I'm going to deal with it later. So the derivative of sine, again, is cosine. I then keep that 3x. I have to keep that there. This 3x, you see, it like rides itself along. Okay, The inside function kind of rides along until it's dealt with at the end. Don't 
don't change the inside function until you have already gotten to take the derivative of it. Okay, so now I have the cosine of 3x. Well, now I'm ready to deal with this 3x because I've already dealt with the squared function. I've dealt with the, um, the inside function. Excuse me. I've dealt with the derivative of sine, which is the cosine of 3x. And now I'm ready to deal with this part here, which I'm just going to go weep over here, right? The derivative of 3x is what? It's 3, right? Hopefully you said that. So the derivative of that is 3. So you can see how all of these things kind of stack up. And you just multiply them down the line. Now, each piece is very important. And we're not done because we have to simplify and make sure everything is nice and clean and whatnot. Um, but really, it's very easy from this point but you have to take it piece by piece. So the derivative of this big, excuse me, oops. The derivative of sine squared of 3x is 2, which comes from this 2, times the sine of 3x, which is here, times the derivative of sine of 3x, which is cosine of 3x, times 3. And you can see color-coded wise where all this stuff comes from. And so when we when we take the um, when we simplify all of this, we have two. We look for something common because we're multiplying times three, which gives us six. We then have the sine of three x, and we have the cosine of three x. Now we could simplify this a little bit more. Um, there are trig identities that can help us do that, but at this point, I'm fine with with leaving it in this term, in these terms. Um, and you can, as you can see, it becomes more complex the more functions involved. But just like everything in um, math up to a certain point, it's all just little tiny operations that you have to pay attention to. Really, there's no c complicated math. I'm not doing any crazy computations. I'm just paying attention to the little details and doing little computational, um, li excuse me, little computations that help me find my answer. Um, so just make sure when you're doing a problem, look for your x and then look for the things closest to x. And it's very important to pay attention to brackets. In this case, it's very simple. It's very easy to see. Okay, well, the closest thing to x is this 3. Well, past that, the closest thing is sine. Now, that's sometimes hard to see, but just learn to see that the squared part here is actually being applied to the whole sine of 3x and not just the sine. Okay, It's just the way that they notate it um, to make sure that um, we're not taking the squared and applying it to the 3x for whatever reason.